Hello to my Aquarius. Aquarius, this video is for the 17th of March through the 17th of April. Yes, Aquarius. Yes, yes, yes. Happy first quarter moon. Happy first quarter moon phase. We've already been experiencing that first quarter moon phase a um, couple of days before the 17th of March, you know, you'll experience it a couple of days after the 17th of March leading up to the full moon. So happy first quarter moon in Gemini. You already have the questions for the moon in Gemini in the previous reading. Go check it out. This is a general reading, Aquarius, so take only what resonates with you. If you're interested in a personal reading, my information is down below. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you're coming back, welcome back. If you are just cruising on by, cruising through, stopping, pausing, watching, then maybe the title caught your, caught your eye. I appreciate all the love, Aquarius. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Don't forget to get your digital journals and your digital calendars. The links are below so that you can document your own journey. You can document your own journey while life is lifing. You don't want to miss any part of it. You want to be in the moment at all times. Let's get into it, Aquarius. I've already prayed over your cards. The energy is already clear. Again, this is a general reading. Take only what resonates with you. I am talking to you wherever Aquarius is in your birth chart. Wherever it's in your birth chart. Even my cross watchers, check your birth chart to see if Aquarius is in your birth chart. Check to see if Aquarius is in your birth chart. All right, judgment card came out first. The full card came out. Here we have the Wheel of Fortune, the Four of Cups, the Knight of Wands, the Nine of Swords, Aquarius, the Nine of Swords, judgment card, right? So I'm definitely feeling like somebody's going to feel, you know, you're closing out a cycle. So this full card lets me know that you're embarking on a new journey of how you are um, um, identifying inherited blessings and gifts and blessings and also inherited burdens from both sides of your family, right? Because remember, and the reason why the emphasis is just so much on family is because we're coming up on, this is an outer planet. You're ruled by two outer planets, Aquarius, Uranus, and also Saturn, right? But we were coming up on this outer planet going retrograde, Uran uh, Pluto, excuse me. There's a link for Pluto retrograde in the description of the video that leads you to my second YouTube channel. Please go watch it because... You don't want to get caught up so busy, not taking the time to kind of, you know, journal your your uh, your progress so that by the time Pluto goes retrograde, you're like, oh my God, why is this thing like all hell is breaking loose? I keep trying to let people forewarn people. Pluto is no joke. It's the outermost planet. It's the planet of death, rebirth. It's the planet of, it's an emotional roller coaster planet. So when you think about like, you know, all of a sudden, and a, a volcano has erupted or all of a sudden you hear about world disaster you hear about all kinds of stuff that's what it could feel like if you don't prepare yourself and so the good thing about us coming up on a full moon in libra and also a penumbral or partial lunar eclipse on the 25th of march is that that penumbral lunar eclipse gives us an opportunity to let go of some of our ancestral family childhood traumas you gradually let go. It's a partial one. So it won't be as intense as a total lunar eclipse. And that's where you want to start. Because if you're holding on to all of that stuff that was passed down to you and life is happening and you don't know, you don't know what's going to happen from one moment to the next. You don't know what's going to happen from one portal to the next. When you look out the window, that's a portal. What you see when you look in the mirror, that's a portal. What is going to, you know, what's going to, you, what thoughts are going to come to you when you're in the shower? That drain is a portal. What, what thoughts are you going to come to you while you're using a bathroom? That's a portal. When you step out your front door, portal, cell phone, portal. You don't know what's going to happen from moment to moment, but you can get in front of a lot of things if you know kind of what's to come. So that's what I'm trying to help you with the moon phases, the moon cycles, right? So yeah, source is saying, you know, you're going to feel very fortunate moving forward because all the time that somebody may have felt like when you thought about the circus that you left behind, when it could have come to your family, ex-love interests, past situations, jobs, all of those things, source is saying you can now close out your cycle because this is this is your, your ruling planet Uranus. Sources and this is um this connects us with Jupiter. Jupiter is the planet of good luck, good fortune, horizon, hubris. It's the planning of um growth and opportunity. So sources saying I'm giving you an opportunity to grow. 
I'm giving you an opportunity to grow so you can close out cycles in love. See this sunlight right here operating in your light. So being in your light really does serve a purpose. It helps you to see what you would not normally see with your, your natural eyes or with your naked eye, right? So here we have the four of cups here. So somebody has just kind of been kind of sitting around. Um, and so Source is like, no, no, no. Do some things that nurture your spirit. You even have an ancestor that's saying, do things to nurture your spirit. Stay focused. You have a lot of ideas. Stay focused on those ideas. That's what you journal every single day. Write down your ideas. Because oh, where's the ideas are coming through? If you're just sitting around there not doing anything to nurture yourself, pour into yourself, which is which is the beauty of speaking of water the beauty of the moon moving into cancer so it's going to start out of the new i mean first quarter moon in gemini which you already have those questions that's about flipping a switch and stepping through the portal right and saying okay i see myself on the other times on the other side so i don't want to grieve too much of what i'm leaving behind right so i want to sit there and i just this is what you prayed for so it's just saying stay focused about what you prayed for because it's here here we also have the nine of swords right you may be remembering all the nightmares that you left behind, right? All the nightmare experiences that you left behind. There's two sides of the sword, right? So there's a light and side, light and dark side to the number four, light and dark side to number number nine, right? So the light side of the number four is four connects us. It's the earth number, right? But it connects us to all aspects of ourselves, our earth, our body, letting us know that when you learn how to go along with change in God's flow, you remember no matter how many people landed on the dark side, that the people that you encountered that landed on the dark side of the number four is their way or the highway. They got to gang up. They got to get everybody together, gang stalk people. They got to do all of this other stuff. You know, they're committed to believing the worst about you, Aquarius, and all of that. So it's to say, no matter if they are still in that head, that space, they chose to land on the dark side, Aquarius, while you are cho choosing to go with God's flow, the living water inside of you. So you are still, we're talking about the number four, a divine being of light who's having a human experience. But guess what? Even the people who choose to land on the dark side, they are too. So they have to continue going through whatever it is that they're going through. Source is just telling you to stay as far away from those types of energies. You, you, you know ahead of time when people are committed, the moment you tell them that you're an Aquarius and they say, oh, I don't get along with Aquarius. So they start going through their, their personal horror stories that they, you know, have been through with an Aquarius, that's your cue to not sit there and prove to them that you're a good, you different from all what they experience and you trying to prove to them that, hey, that's their experience. You don't need to prove to them that. So it's just saying, just get as far away from them as possible. If that's what their belief is, you're not trying to trigger anybody. If that's that they had a bad experience with an Aquarius, you don't have to tell, well, all Aquarius are not the same. You know, did you, you know, their birth chart, they're not trying to hear about a birth chart if they've gone through some kind of trauma from an Aquarius. So that's not your job to, to, to make them see anything different. If that's what they choose to believe, you're going to have to let God send an Aquarius across their path. Maybe it's their manager that's helping them. Maybe it's a, a baby that's born into the family that makes them the favorite aunt or uncle, or, you know, maybe it could be their favorite child or whatever it is. It's not your job. They've already said it out of their mouth. They have bad experience with Aquarius. That's your cue to exit stage left, right? Again, you're not trying to trigger anybody. So when we talk about the number nine, you also, on the other side of that, don't want to get... The number nine lets me know that's a death rebirth, right? Light side of the number nine, now that something has ended and I'm on the rebirth side, then my clairvoyance and my claircognizance have... My clairvoyance and my psychic abilities have increased, right? So you can continue being a high vibrating Aquarius. The dark side of it is um, people who are tyrannical and people who are um, egotistical, right? Egotistical. Things going in your favor, source, this situation is closed out, you're moving on, and people feel some kind of way. So source is saying stay, definitely stay away from certain types of energies that are committed to believing the worst about you, including family members including family members. They've heard some things about you and they chose to believe it. Hey, you're not trying to change their mind. You, you don't, you're not applying for a position in their universe. You have learned how to detach. And that's what I'm seeing for you all so far. So when, when you're sitting around, make sure you're not drinking extra caffeinated drinks, extra sugary drinks, 
eating foods that's going to continue to dehydrate your spirit because when you really look at it, when we talk about in the spirit of water, since the moon will be moving into cancer, cancer, a moon in cancer is, um, can bring comforting. Like it's like, uh, the moon is wrapping its arms around you, right? Comforting and very compassionate towards you learning how to embrace divine feminine energy, not toxic feminine energy. Right. Um, and it, it does, it connects us with our intuition. It connects us. Cancer is ruled by the moon. So it's going to feel like double emotional when the moon moves into cancer, because it gives us an opportunity to heal wounds and trauma from our ancestors. Um, just kind of processing our own wounds and solitude It's literally going to take people back through their past lives. So whatever country your family originated from, it's going to feel like for some people you are carrying, you have been carrying that burden passed down, just like recipes have been passed down to like your favorite foods. Oh, that came from great, 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 great. Some of the traumas have been passed down to Aquarius. And so that's where you're saying, okay, I'm going to take a moment to sit with self. Cancer's uh, symbol is a crab. So I definitely feel like somebody's going to kind of be like, as you're flipping a switch and you're moving forward into a portal, taking some time to nurture and protect yourself away from everybody else. Cancers are really homebodies. So I definitely feel like you're going to be doing that to protect your energy, to kind of process your thoughts. And I definitely feel like you'll be drinking more water, you know, doing things, maybe taking spiritual showers, spiritual baths, those kind of things, Aquarius. But I definitely feel like your star is shining bright. And as you're healing, that's why I'm trying to gently walk everybody through 2024, because even though this is the year of eight and eight is the money exchange number, there's a lot of people who are landing on the dark side of the number eight and it's going. And then about about the time Pluto goes retrograde May 2nd, it's going to be like a, a volcano erupted in a lot of people's lives. And so I'm trying to gently walk you through that, right? So here we have the temperance card. You definitely have a guardian angel that's watching over you, you know, on the other side, trying to help you. They're very proud of you, just the, the person that you've become. And um, here we also have the death card. And so something has definitely ended. Something has definitely ended. Your, um, your, you know, just kind of like the harsh judgment on both sides, like your harsh judgment possibly about your family, their harsh judgment about you, um, you know, other people's harsh judgment about you, your harsh judgment about them, because you've decided I'm closing out now that you're breaking cycles, chains and curses, you're closing out that chain and you're moving forward. You have a lot of ideas, right? So all you need to know is that you're trying to travel light Aquarius into this new job, this new friendship. You're traveling light through this portal that you're walking through, right? While the moon is in Gemini. And so that you get a minute to just kind of sort of sit down and go through your molting process. Like a, uh, like a crab goes through a molting process of just shedding that, that outer, um, that outer shell and just kind of that, that transformation that I see you going through. Everything is lining up perfectly for you, Aquarius. Everything is lining up perfectly for you. We also have the Three of Cups here. There's a lot of temptation. The um, the Four and Three of Cups would be Seven of Cups. I definitely feel like somebody's in a posture of gratitude, you know, just saying, Source, thank you. Stay in that posture of gratitude. Stay there. Stay in that posture of gratitude. Stay in that posture of gratitude, right? Here we also have the two of swords here and take the blindfolds off. Take the blindfolds off because it's hard to see the blessing ahead if you're still shut down by the burdens of the past. And so though that number two lets me know that something could have been passed down, like again, from both sides of the family, Aquarius, that lets you know that while you were carrying a lot of ancestral childhood family traumas from both sides of the family. And if you can think of it that way, it's like, you know, a lot of people may have inherited being able to sing, maybe to play um, uh, musicianship. You know, this I'm, I'm saying that because of this right here, this card right here. Musicianship, your love for music, your love for, you know, the arts and all those kind of things. Since we're starting out with water, water connects us to creativity. It connects to, you know, like right there in the pelvic bowl area. That's where creativity, the first time we experience water is in the womb where you, that's where creation started right there. So you were created in water. Source is saying to you, um, source is saying to you, you're taking it back to a rebirth. So death, 
rebirth, right? So as you're breaking cycles, chains, and curses, and everybody has an opportunity, sometimes you need to break away from everybody so people can sit with themselves. They can pray and talk to God and get clear answers directly from God. Because even if people were asking you of some things, Aquarius, while you're going through your transformation, you may not have even been clear as to what was going on. Imagine carrying ancestral trauma of people you never even met. You've heard about them maybe or bits and pieces or every, everybody trying to put the puzzle together. You know how it is, Aquarius. It's like that game that you play when you're in, in uh, preschool when like the teacher will, like you, the kids sit around in a circle, the teacher will whisper one word in the first kid's ear by the time it gets around to the 25th, 30th child, 30th child, it comes back totally different. And so that's how stories are passed down. So source is saying you inherited a lot of gifts, but you may have also inherited a lot of traumas as well because moving through space and time. And I definitely feel like somebody is understanding that now, understanding that, right? As you continue to pour back into yourself. So your ancestors are definitely saying, drink more water, spend some time in divine feminine energy, allow these moon phases to help you to deal with why you, why you feel the way you do, the dreams that you have, um, and make sure you don't pass that down to anybody that... Um, your influence or, or impacting at this phase in your life, okay? All right, let's keep it moving forward, Aquarius. Let's keep it moving forward. This is some good news. Source wants you to stay focused. Here we have the Justice card, the Judgment card. Here we have the Death Rebirth card. Here we also have the Temperance card here. So, yes, two situations in particular is over, right? So, something is definitely over. Judgment twice, Judgment, Justice on both sides. Aquarius, something is over. Death card came out twice, you know, here. And so definitely um, these two scales right here, it would be an injustice to yourself, Aquarius, not to stay focused. It would definitely be an injustice to you to not stay focused because you have two guardian angels on the other side. That's what I'm saying. Somebody should feel blessed and highly favored. I feel like it could be somebody's grandparents on the other side that's really saying to you, we're very proud of you breaking cycles, chains, and curses. Because it takes a lot of, you had to come through as an Aquarius, somebody who marches to the beat of their own drum. It could be somebody's parents if your parents are no longer here. Or it could be one parent and a grandparent or somebody who was like a parent to you at some point, you know, in your time. It could have been a mentor or somebody who, if you, um, it's not always blood relatives, just so we're clear, like guardian angels on the other side. But here we have high priestess. Some The reason why they're proud of you is because you're not carrying ancestral burden into the next phase of your life. You're literally traveling light now, listening to your high priestess gifts. Now, along the line of gifts, right? This is why I talk about journaling so much. Here we also have the Knight of, um, the Knight of Swords, right? So, which brings us to the Ten of Swords. You, the things that were designed to keep you down, usually when you see the Ten of Swords, the person is lying down with Ten Swords in them, right? But this person is up. This person has gotten up. They made a choice to say, I'm landing on the light side of life, right? I'm saving myself by getting action-oriented, ambition focused, and focused moving forward, right? Somebody may have even had a loved one who drove a motorcycle. You may have come from family. A lot of people um, rode motorcycles. You may even ride one yourself. But source is saying to you, Aquarius, your guardian angels on the other side, because you're going through a major life shift right now. And so the things that you pray for, when those things, when God answers those prayers, and you're like, oh my God, it's here. It's actually here, right? You start to think all that time that you said, when, 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 when am I going to call me back for that job? You know, when am I going to meet my person? When am I going to meet my soul community? When, when, when? That's why I talk about living in the moment, operating in your purpose, in your light. The sun is a star, right? And so when we talk about your star sign, your sun sign, and just how you got to your journey, you were definitely marching to the beat of your own drum. You may have seemed like you were very rebellious to some people at some point, but when you're carrying when you chose that family to come through that that particular portal and chose the family in pure consciousness, it was meant to teach. It was every, every person that comes through a portal chooses their family and it's meant to teach 
everybody around you something going to help them to grow. People don't see it at first because people think, oh, babies, they don't really know anything. They're just saying gaga, goo goo, and gurgling and all of that other stuff. But in pure consciousness, you know that you don't need a better half because you know you have, you are divine masculine and divine feminine in one physical body that you know that source is inside of you guiding you, right? Protecting you, you know? And so I definitely feel like some major, like looking at your cards here, major, major, major shifts happening. Here's the tower card, right? And so that tower card reminds us that um, the tower card, and then we have the hermit card here also came through. Like we talked about that crab shell, like the hermit crab shell, you're going through a molting process. So for people who may not have felt like they were good enough or worthy or whatever the case may be, you're inspiring more people than you realize. You're inspiring a whole lot of people more than you realize because that's why Source is saying to you, know your worth, Aquarius. When people automatically find out you're an Aquarius or when your birthday is or something about you because you were in being completely honest and sharing things about yourself and they go into the negative, cut them off. You don't need to prove anything because you're on an assignment. You're on an assignment. You're not trying to trigger anybody's emotions. You're not trying to hurt anybody. You're not trying to remind them of ancestral childhood family traumas they may be carrying at all. As a humanitarian, that should never be your intention to hurt somebody, right? So you be better helping them to get away from them. Here we have eight of wands and get away from them fast. Source is saying, uh, you know, to you, here's the devil card. Because it would definitely be a demonic attachment, right? Here we also have the seven of wands came out twice. Knight and eight of wands. So two types of situations in particular, I definitely feel like you're moving away from, you know, Aquarius. This is good, good. Like I said, everything is lining up perfectly for you. Everything is lining up perfectly for you. Let's see if we can get some more information about this. Nine of wands, right? Now that you're in the light, you can also help other people find their light as well. Continue to make a um, impact on your community and the world at large. Now this two major things are completely over. It's dead. Dead is gone. So people who are operating, that's why some people are going to look back and go, gosh, I really don't understand Aquarius. I don't understand the way they think. Um, I don't, I don't understand. I didn't know why, like, why didn't they just, a lot of people feel like they looking for, to you for answers, but you're not their God. You may not even understand what you're carrying. You may not even understand the gifts or the burdens of those gifts, um, bring what you carrying. Right. So a lot of people want that. They want that glory. They want that. Oh, every, oh my God. You know, I want to hear, you know, what you went through and you hear when people do interviews and stuff, they, Oh, I want to hear what you went through. They want, they see your, they see your star shining, but they don't, they want the gory details. If it comes in a salacious form from other people, they don't want to hear it out of your mouth. They don't want to hear the reality of stuff that you've actually gone through because you'd be like, Oh my God, you know, cause it would take you back to too many like I said before, wilderness situations. So yeah, I definitely see you continue to keep on moving forward. And some people will let you know. They'll just check out on the phone. They don't they'll check out on the phone. They don't want to hear what you have to say because something about their something about your experiences is also triggering something in them. That's when you stop. You don't have to say, Oh, did you hear me? Did you are you listening to what I'm saying? Just stop the conversation right there. Because you're not trying to hurt them. Here we have the five of swords. And we also have the sun card, right? So, yeah. So I definitely see you continuing. The tower card lets me know that somebody is definitely operating in enlightening to stay focused in your light and leave the past behind. Leave it behind. We know that the sun illuminates the moon. So as we, are, as we come up on this full moon in Libra, this is Libra's card, you're not doing any more injustices to yourself by staying connected to anything or anyone that has misunderstood you, Aquarius, and being committed to in very arrogant, dogmatic, and prideful fashion um, won't admit that they misunderstood you. They misread you. They misunderstood you. You're, you don't have anything to prove. So kudos and congratulations to you, you know, for that. You're just staying focused, locked in and laser focused, locked in and laser focused, right? I definitely see, you know, somebody meeting someone Well, you all will be bonding over music. Here we have the three of um, three of wands here. So, yeah, we got the three of wands here. And I definitely feel like you'll be booked and busy and not burdened, you know, moving forward. And um, 
yeah this is nice hold on for a second definitely booked and busy that's why source is saying stay away from any energies that are committed to misunderstanding you all aquarius because i feel like you're going to meet somebody in business and or in love here we have the temperance card yeah um yeah like i said you have you have a lot of guardian angels around you we also have the two of cups some kind of proposal is trying to come in you know aquarius i definitely like i said i feel like somebody before i even pulled this card i feel like somebody's gonna meet somebody in business and or in love you're definitely not doubling back to anything that you've decided to move on from because people don't know that um like i said we have three four three, four, seven, and two is nine. It's definitely going to be a wish fulfilled for you all Aquarius. And you never know where you're going to meet your person in business and or in love. See, when we talk about proposal, people just, or soulmate, people automatically seem everybody's looking for love. Not everybody's looking for love. You know, you love yourself enough. You're not looking for it. You are love, just like other people can tap into that pure love inside of themselves, that joy inside of themselves source, right? Somebody, I feel like somebody could have been praying for a business proposal, right? That's going to make all the difference in the world because you have to look at what that energy looks like on the outside as well as the inside. Because you can meet that person anywhere. You can meet that person at the gas station while you're in the grocery store, anything. You can meet that person wherever. And just like in full, uh, in the, and it's not full, but in the moon in Gemini mode, you're going to have to learn how to flip that switch and learn how to adapt. So that means you're out, you're aware, you're not checked out somewhere overthinking so far ahead. Oh my God, I'm carrying all this weight and all of this. I'm just telling you for the purpose of preparing yourself and journaling. So if you get it out of your, if you create a ritual to get it out of your, um, get it out every day through your journaling um, whether even speaking to your recorder, just to kind of sort of record yourself, say it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to come out all clean and structured. It can come out like free writing as long as you're getting it out. Um, then you can be aware of w in spaces where you are because somebody has been praying like, I, I want to go to bit. I want to go into business with some people. I want to, you know, I wish I could meet this type of business person, that type of business person. Yeah. So you're going to have to tap into that wisdom. When everybody else is praying for bigger paychecks and bigger, more money and this and that, because they keep hearing a year of wealth and you are praying for wisdom. That's why you got so much fire here. That's why sources saying you're wise enough to not to go back because people are just now awakening from, you know, awakening from whatever it is they were going through, whatever they were carrying. And so there it is. You are somebody's wish fulfillment as an employee or a colleague. I would say like really kind of a partnership and vice versa. But so they have nine wishes, wishes. You have nine wishes. And so that's what I'm seeing for you all, Aquarius. This is good stuff. Good stuff. Real good stuff, you know, for you all. So let's see what else we got going on here. Let's see what else. Like I said, everything is lining up perfectly for you all, Aquarius. Let's see what else we got going on here. Let's see what else we got going on here. So we can go ahead and close this out. Here are the questions for the moon and um, cancer. Because emotions can be high, you know, when the moon moves into cancer. Because cancer is already ruled by the moon. So you may feel more watery, more sensitive. So you don't want to hold back on the tears of just leaving some things behind. Leaving that job behind, romantic relationship behind. Offloading some of the things that's going to be downloaded into your dream from your ancestors sharing with you with what they went through and those kind of things, right? If you go back, if you've been keeping your journals, you know, up to date and you go back and read some of your entries, it's going to shock some people like the stuff that you wrote down, just like you thought you were going out, going crazy and going out of your mind. Now that high priestess energy was kicking up and, and, you know, you're going to have a whole lot more compassion for the energies that you thought, well, they were, you know, um, in a zombified state or checked out, but you still got to keep on moving forward. You still got to keep moving forward. So this is a beautiful time when that moon moves into um, wish fulfillment again. This is very nice. When that moon moves into... Um, cancer it's just a really really beautiful time of great healing and just being in receiving mode like so just like the river since cancer is a water sign that knows that it's shaped and it's guided by the shores that's holding it you know source is saying your body would be the shores that's holding your emotions so if you feel like you want to cry cry if you feel like you need to get up and work out and just sweat it all out do that if you feel like you need to lie in a bathtub and just relax and just listening to you know the vibration of water sounds you're also doing that as well here we have a lot of um here we also have um 
your community coming together as well. So you are definitely a wish fulfilled for the energies, the spaces that you're going into. And it's a, it's a, it's a answered prayer for you as well. So if you've been around energies that are uh, ruthless and energies that are um, in those spaces that were committed to misunderstanding you just because they know what your zodiac sign is. They don't even know the rest of your birth chart. They don't know their birth chart. They don't care to know. They're just dealing with the physical existence of what they've experienced, not looking at the burdens that they've carried. That is not your bag to carry at all, right? So take the blindfolds off. Like I said, take the blindfolds off um, because we have, yeah, because it'll try to, it'll try to, if you overthought that, it'll drive you crazy almost to a point of just depression. Like why can't people see certain things? It would definitely land you on the dark side of the number seven. And so it's just trying to get you to stay focused, to stay focused, stay focused, stay focused, stay focused, stay focused, right? Stay focused. So yeah, so it would, it would drive, it would try to drive you. It would like, you know, so you be asking the question, why, 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 why? And sources the one through the tower moment, making it make sense, right? Why are my parents that way? Why is my ex like that? Why do people on my job? Why, why, why? Because some people can't, their root chakra is so cracked, like right at the fruit, the root, which is developed between the ages of zero and seven. They don't even want to deal with family stuff. They don't want to feel, deal with family, childhood, ancestral trauma. So they keep just packing it away, but it's coming out in other areas of their lives. And so when you choose to do that, that's a very brave move to say you don't want to keep carrying that heaviness through life, right? So here we have the um the the night of yeah, so here's the the knight of um swords and also the queen of swords. So as you're on your throne, carefully vetting your thoughts, moving on from energies, um you know, moving away from energies. Again, you're just staying focused. You're just staying focused. You're definitely staying focused. Like I said, everything is lining up perfectly for your Aquarius. Very, very, very nice. Very nice. Like I said, happy. Did I get the, um, yeah. Happy, um, happy first quarter moon in Gemini. So some of the things you can do is meditate on balance. This would be balance, right? No more injustices to yourselves. Um, and so if you didn't hear me, I'm going to say this one last time. When you meet people, Aquarius, because you don't have the burden of things that you're leaving behind. That's what Source is saying. Get focused. Um, get locked in and laser focused. Ambition, you know, action oriented. You, you pray for some things, some answers. The prayers have been answered. It's time for you to get focused, right? Laser focused. Don't, you're not carrying that baggage of all of this. Be so, um, um, let me see. When you first meet people, Aquarius, and you start kind of opening up and sharing, first of all, you got to be careful with your emotions because emotion is water, right? And our bodies are made up of a very large percentage of water. So the more you pour into someone else's universe, the harder it's going to be for you to emotionally detach, right? That is... Um, that's why you gotta, it's levels to getting to your throne of your emotions and it's levels to getting to the emotions of you. Just like, you know, when somebody's, um, too close to you, you're like, okay, I need you to back up off me. You too close to my aura. You're in my auric layers, right? That kind of thing. And then they are committed to base. They're committed to misunderstanding you. Even they don't, don't know you Aquarius based on some information you may have shared about them. You do yourself and them a favor immediately by detaching because what you may have done in the past, Aquarius, you gave people an opportunity to manipulate your emotions and therefore see yourself the way they choose to see you. You're not giving people that power at all. You're not giving people that power at all. So I know you all are fixed sign, but I definitely feel like somebody's learning how to detach. So yeah, yeah. So definitely your piece of the pie is here and um, you're definitely being watched over by your pa. Yeah. So, so it's definitely wants you to move on in childlike faith, move forward in childlike faith. This is nice. See, we also have the seven of coins. So I definitely feel like you're building legacy wealth with somebody. Definitely building legacy wealth with somebody. And this is really, really nice. You um, definitely have somebody that's protecting you. And it's... Um, 
someone who is I, okay let me just say this i feel like looking at your cards you may have experienced so much toxic masculinity that on the other side somebody may not have seen it you know just kind of how like they were conditioned this is ancestral for real like and but on the other side they're definitely protecting you like the way that they felt like they should have protected you on this side right so well, i don't know who that's for but here we have daughter of sticks here so i definitely feel like um somebody definitely has this kind of get up and go and know you know how to save yourself you know how to move on from some things so yeah so some of the things that you're doing when we talk about this um this first quarter moon phase first quarter moon phase is about setting intentions but taking some kind of action towards those intentions right and so that boost can kind of give you this sense of enthusiasm and manifesting those intentions that you set and you know gives you all this energy that you know you can do it so meditate on balance you can also check on your manifestations see how they're going right every single day did you mark one thing off your checklist okay whoo i was able to do that right including the mirror work including getting you know waking up and being grateful for the day and 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 well, i don't know if some people say their prayers and they go meditate whatever your routine is check that off the list that's something you really can be proud of because you're learning how to discipline yourself and not be so fixated on overthinking something so you're learning how to step into those other rooms of your of your um your 12 rooms right those 12 houses right so you're learning how to step into those rooms imagine having 12 houses you got all of this property and you don't even know the address and you don't even know you don't you got all these keys to these houses and you don't have an access to them you don't know what's in every room you don't know things so detailed that's the hermit mode right they're like so meticulous you haven't stepped into those rooms of your house right so yeah so you can work on work with an emphasis on creating positive energy you can research um you can re do research you know on things you can reflect on decisions that you have to make about moving forward so i definitely feel like you and somebody is going to you all are going to build a very rich legacy together you know you definitely have your piece of the pie here on this planet so i definitely see you moving through or continuing to move through a rite of passage right and we have the two of baskets right here so building your community and wherever wherever that looks like here we have the three of baskets staying in the posture of gratitude every single day you know, whatever, wherever it is that you're going. We also have the son of sticks, right? So somebody um, had an ancestor that was, I feel like somebody has roots in like in a very rural space in this part of the world. It doesn't really matter what country or what continent, but I feel like somebody could have had like a, um, lived in rural areas where they may have been surrounded by snakes. I'm talking about like physical snakes right and so they learn how to they learn the behaviors of snakes they learn the behaviors of um how they lie in wait this could have been this is a gift that was passed down to somebody like how snake like you've learned the nature of snakes you know how they move how they lie in wait how they coil up you know you've learned the light and dark side of snake energy that was passed down to somebody you've learned the um the power serpent power you've learned those things right uh you learn how to see um um the the light and dark side of things and what what they symbolize right what they symbolize right um they they symbolize sin rejuvenation death resurrection um therapy um the duality of snakes right um yeah you you and so i definitely feel like somebody's paw like their grandfather grandpa or whatever you call was on the other side saying that they they had to learn just and how they grew up around snakes right and just the how snakes you know just kind of like how they move um how they survive right um Um, you know, even in, when we talk about like, um, venom, you know, venomous snakes, non-venomous and venomous snakes, right? 
and just anybody who has learned Latin, if you grew up in certain spaces where you were taught Latin and just the root of venom and just knowing what that means, like furnished with poison, poisonous, venomous, imbued with magical powers, those kind of things. Um, I feel like somebody may have been raised in a space where you were taught Latin, um, which you don't hear a lot of people. They don't know the root. They don't know the root of words. You know, they don't know the root of where things came from. Um, but I definitely feel like somebody is in touch with their magical powers. Um, and just that, that symbol of femininity, you know, within themselves. And so that's what I feel like there, you know, connecting with the divine part of yourself. And so here we have the world card, right? The garden card. Somebody has definitely learned how to, in your journeys, you've learned how to, you're learning how to set very clear boundaries and enforce those boundaries. You're learning now how to build your own rules, your own traditions, your, your, um, your, you're getting real serious about it, you know, Aquarius, which is really, really good, which is really good that you, that that's where you are right now, you know, just that. That symbolism of, you know, things are, things are helping you. Sex magic. I draw on my body with an invisible blade carved with the bliss of lustrous teeth. It is the allure that I will meet blood and flesh, right? So when we talk about um, incubus and succubus spirits, and it's not even ironic that you're sitting around like this person right here sitting around i feel like somebody escaped sex magic the, you know through the many it's you know like um when we by the time you get to the world card so you start at the full card in the major arcana which we saw that early on in your reading but then you get to the end of the la the last or major arcana which is the world card somebody has already been through something before so you recognize it in advance just like i said to you if somebody says, if somebody, you, if they find out that you're an Aquarius and they automatically go to the negative, then you need to go ahead and cut that off right there. You need to back away from that, right? That's where you go into protection mode. Um, that's where you go into protection mode, Aquarius. If that makes any sense to somebody, you go into protection mode, right? When you feel like maybe that could be a dangerous situation for you, you go into uh, to protection mode. Yeah. So, like I said before, the 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 even the letter S for snake, you know, connects us with the number nineteen. It connects us with the number ten. It also connects us with the number one, right? And so S, like a snake opens to the right which you mean the future on the top and the left the past at the bottom like the number five represented an openness to engage in spiritual and material right it symbolizes the image of a snake uh, which can wind itself secretly and silently through any situation um, and gain power and wisdom you also remember that when you have a kundalini experience you see the symbol of a snake because it's an awakening you know, for you. So I feel like somebody may have, somebody's paw, you know, may have come from a time where they've learned the, they've learned how, um, snakes move. Like, you know, you hear people say, just know, you know how to move in a room filled with snakes. You'll be able to see. So wherever the journey is that you're going to, cause it's real deep Aquarius, wherever your, whatever your journey is, your new job, new friendship circle. Cause I definitely see you, um, you know, at a, um, at a table, each one of those people at that table, 10 people at the table has their own table. He'll have 10 people, then 10 people, then 10 people, then 10 people. You're learning how to adapt in, um, in a room filled with energies that are bringing their ancestral blessings, but also possibly they maybe have been aware. That's why prayers are so important where you're saying people are leaving those ancestral burdens outside of that room, if it makes any sense, you know, to you. Like some people bring all their problems to work. Oh my God, you know, um, such and such and such and such 
just totally just, you know, water down the gift that they're bringing to the workplace that where they were hired for. Some people bring all of that into the workplace. Oh my God, you know, this happened, that happened, so on and so forth. They got to stand around, you know, having 30, 45 minute conversations about whatever's going on in there. You're like, look, uh, we got work to do. I mean, I... The, the letter S also looks like a snake. It represents spinal cord and that Kundalini experience. Um, it uh, symbolizes a new beginning, a rebirth. That's why you see death, rebirth here, also there. You have a Kundalini experience. A S, strong connection with the sun, stars, the solar, and soul subject matters. It symbolizes a spiral staircase to the stars. You know, so... S, you know, is about changing directions of a middle of a project or plan or searching for a better approach, those kind of things, right? Um, S also represents the self, right? And so again, when you talk about energies that where you're learning how to detach from energies, where you've learned how to move through spaces where there are venomous snake energies and you go back that's why somebody is that's why you got a lot of help on the other side that's why you got a lot of help on the other side even when you see in sex sex magic you really can see right through what other people's what we what what am i trying to say what what trap or what weave people can set to get you like trap you in and some, you'll be able to recognize an incubus, a succubus spirit just like that. If that makes any sense to somebody. And it'll make you upset because you're almost like, you know, like the energy is trying to almost, it almost like insults your intelligence, Aquarius, to recognize that the sex itself is not dirty. But when people try to weaponize it, they try to use it at to like to, they try to use it. So it's just saying, mm -mm. yeah, it's a turn off for you. I am here in this present moment. I have all that I need. I lack nothing. Time is relative. Right now is all that matters. I wait with excitement. All good things uh, come in due time. All is working for my highest good. There's another. Um, so, so like I said, that's also an S2. You also recognize that type of, you know what people's demons are. So if somebody has an incubus or a succubus spirit, whether it's in your family a friend, a such and such, or whatever. You don't have to be engaged with that energy, like intimate, like physical intimacy with that energy. You recognize the spirit. So you know how to turn the water off just like that. You know how to cut it off just like that. You know, cut the, cut the, like I said, the water faucet, the emotions off. So I feel, I see somebody feels liberated. The doubts and fears still come up. You don't believe that they're you. Because they're not, you, somebody has, like I said before, has witnessed and seen so much Aquarius that you recognize things before other people even know that you recognize those things. If that makes any sense, that high priestess energy. I trust the timing of my life. You should. We're going to go ahead and close this out. Um, and we'll, we'll, you know, come back around for the mo uh, Motivational Monday reading for you all, Aquarius. Yeah, come back around for the Motivational Monday reading for you all. Motivational Monday for you all. Yeah, which you'll see a day in advance, right? You'll see it in a, a day in advance. But let's get, let's go ahead and we'll pull some more cards and let's close it out. So here we have, you have the gift of clairsentience. You pick up on others' vibrations, their emotions, their moods, their feelings. You pick up on their water. You, their water would be their sensuality, their sexuality, their... Um, their, what they flow with, whether it's a net flow with negativity or flow with positivity, you pick up on that. Some people are with whatever, right? And so, um, you pick up on their creativity. You pick up on their scent, their, um, their healthy range of emotions. You know, if they are sexually rigid, you know, if they have it in them to be promiscuous, you know, if they, they, they have sexually transmitted demons, you already know that Aquarius. So here we have, it's time for you to open up your vault door. So you taking a leap of faith and sources saying, yes, 
Yes, Aquarius, you deserve the best. It's you versus you. You versus you. You inspired them to heal. You also have the gift of clairvoyance. You see things very clearly. Like I said before, you see a lot of things very clearly. Are you harshly judging anybody? Nope. Definitely not harshly judging anybody. You're not judging your family. You're not judging ex-friends. You're not judging anybody. You're not harshly judging anybody. You are just releasing yourself from um, any um, injustices to yourself, Aquarius. So, yeah. You know your worth and you're helping people to find theirs, to know their worth as well, right? So that's your, your um, polarity sign. Leo is your polarity sign. And three lets me know that you were born to inspire. So the dark side of three would be a person who's multitasking, thinking that they're getting things done, um, when really it's just creating a distraction for them and everybody else. And so um, source is saying to you, you have such control over your water, Aquarius, when you recognize certain types of things in people. Remember, the wa water is a reflection. So Source could have been showing you your old self in people. That's why there's, you really have nothing to be ashamed or embarrassed of in your, fat, your past. A lot of things have been passed down to everybody, burdens and blessings in the ancestral line, right? That they're not even aware why they are the way that they are. But again, it goes back to, where's the card? It goes back to, uh, let me see if I can see if I can find another. Do, 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 do. So six and two would be the eight of, um, the eight of swords, right? And so in some parts, you'll see a mirror of who you used to be and how people are still, um, kind of sort of entrapped in their way of thinking, right? And so there are some people who are not ready to do the mirror work. They're not really ready to see. And that's okay because, again, you're not their God. They're not your God. But I'm just walking somebody through, like, connecting all the dots. When you come in contact with people who have already judged you before getting to know you, that's your cue to move forward. If you stay, stick around for any length of time and just really listen, journal, pay attention, source will show you that there's parts of them unheal that used to be you. That's why you're not harshly judging them. And so you're moving forward beyond all of that. So that's what I have for you all. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, we have a, a number. Yeah, let's do a number and then one last card and let's move forward. 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 Right. Number eight, I am successful. Whether I said in the beginning of your reading, you're getting away from energies who have succumbed to passive and powerless behavior or egotistical, materialistic and forceful. Right. So here we have. And so you can stay on the light side of the number eight. I am successful. Your talent for reaching and setting goals is like no other Aquarius. You are self-sufficient and capable of achieving your ambitions, representing the ebb and flow, the infinite loop of creation. Eight is also the number for karma, right? And so there's good karma coming your way because you recognize, you recognize what was passed down through the bloodline, through a lot of your family members, but you also see, you also are able to protect your energy moving forward, right? Protecting your, your own energy, um, Moving forward, moving forward, moving forward, moving forward, moving forward, right? Um, and like in the Pythagorean um, system, the number eight also connects us with the number 17 and also the number eight um, um, in the letter Q, like for question. Um, Q represents a circle. Uh, with a balancing line at the bottom. Again, we're talking about balance. We're talking about balance, balance, balance here. And you're learning how to balance out things. Um, it can also, um, it symbolizes, um, it represents, the, the letter Q um, represents the letter, um, like the, the word queen. It also represents question, quenching a thirst of knowledge uh, used in order to manifest things. Um, Q also exhibits genius. It can come off as peculiar. Q is honest, dependable, um, practical, mentally quick, and physically active. 
Um, Q can work under pressure and wants to join with a partner who is accomplished and likes to live um, the life of opulence, right? So there's nothing wrong with, like I said, I feel like somebody's going to have multiple properties with their person. You definitely, there's a piece of pie in this universe with your name on it, you know, Aquarius, and you're just moving through a rite of passage. And so continue moving forward and not going backwards. And so remember, eight connects us with the letter Q. And so adjust your crown. Keep on moving forward. Continue asking questions of your ancestors. Don't forget to be okay with healthy, like divine feminine energy, where you are in receiving mode of downloads that's coming through. And don't forget to protect your energy. So here are the questions, and let's go ahead and close this out. Questions for the moon and cancer. What makes you feel safe? The second question is, where is your, sanct uh, your sanctuary, your place of peace and calm? Is it an inner state, a certain environment, or a specific place? The third question is, do you know your female lineage, um, the, the stories of your mother and grandmothers? The fourth question is, how often do you gather strength from the land and her waters? And then last is, do you have sufficient solo time filled with self-care? Solo time, Aquarius. Solo time. That is what I have for you all. I see you all in the Motivational Monday reading where we'll pick up on the rest of this and close it out. So we'll look at the other side of this team of people who you're meeting, you know, what kind of legacy you're building with them. And like I said, I already see somebody has a lot of property. Definitely see somebody has a lot of property and just kind of sort of taking some things back to. So you've been having dreams about snakes or you've been thinking about that. That comes from somebody's um, somebody's paw. You know, on the other side, they already transitioned They're on the other side and they grew up in very, they grew up with acres of land, rural areas where there were snakes. So they learned how to, they've learned how to, you may have even seen pop up videos on social media, like in some parts in the world where you may see people like walking on really, really tall stilts, like to talk, you know, they've learned how to walk on tall stilts so that they can avoid snakes you know, avoid stepping into a snake pit or avoid stepping. So you're going to start recognize just the power of snake energy, the light and dark side of it, right? And awakening. You see a snake, you're like, oh, woo, okay, I need to start paying attention, right? Whether it's a garden snake while you're out there gardening or you, you came across a venomous snake that you may have seen in like a, where would they have them, like in a zoo or, you know, something like that. Or maybe you actually know somebody who has snakes or whatever the case may be. But you're definitely paying attention to the characteristics um, of those types of energy. So that's what I have for you. I'll see you all in your next video. Bye.